perfect all right i think we are live um hi guys hello and welcome to our doing it 11 plus style where i talk to some of the wonderful resource providers that sit in the 11 plus journey if you are here please give us a, a message on the comments so that we can see because uh we can't tell if anybody's watching yet um and i don't want to start i don't want anyone to miss uh miss our, our our amazing interviewee today so just give me a comment let me know that you're here and uh and then i know that we we're, we're good to start um uh, just want to 100 percent check because i don't want anyone oh i think we've got a like i think we're good i think we are good to go uh if you are also watching this on replay give us a hashtag replay so that we know that you're here and I am absolutely delighted to be joined by Katie Knapman today. She is the author of the Jumping Yak books. I'm sure you guys have seen these. And it's, it's a real pleasure for me because I, I don't know you particularly at all. So, uh, so welcome. <laughs> Thank you very much. A pleasure for me to be here. And, uh, and as, as I say to everybody, this is just a minute, but 11 plus style. So the traditional just a minute uh, is where you talk for a minute with no pauses, no hesitation, repetition or deviation. We do away with most of that because you couldn't get through an 11 plus style uh, talk without saying the word 11 plus several times. And I'm sure without saying vocabulary or math. Um, so I definitely hesitate myself. Uh, do not feel under pressure. <laughs> I say that I'm not the one answering the questions. <laughs> <laughs> all right i think we've got a couple of people here um and katie if you are ready shall we begin okay perfect let's begin. so let's go our first question is what is your product and who is it aimed at you get an extra couple of seconds whilst i fiddle around with the timer go for it i tend to hook Okay, so my product, I have written two books which are perfect for children, really ideally for children in year five, but they're suitable for years four, five, and six. The books are Maths Fun for Cool Kids and Revision Fun for Clever Kids. All kids, by the way, are cool and clever. Um, both of these books, one of them, obviously the maths book, focuses on maths questions. So it's a uh, word problems. And if your child is getting, um, is quite good at maths, we've got some harder things like algebra as well. But it also covers a lot of things like multiplication and things that they should just have really nailed. And the revision fun book is, um, full of things like some general knowledge, some uh, science, history, uh, geography, the kind of things that are really good for your child to be talking about in interview at year six, if you go for that, um, as well as some English puzzles and some maths puzzles too. Oh, just got it in. Perfect. All right. Okay, on to the next one. How can your product help children, tutors and parents? Okay, so I have been through not just the 11 plus, but the 7 plus, the 11 plus, the 13 plus and the 16 plus. And I know for a fact, and the exams I did myself, that revision can be quite relentless and sometimes it cannot seem like much fun, but it does need to be done. So my uh, the purpose of my books really is to keep your children thinking, keeping those brains going, keeping them switched on, but taking the pressure off. So if you're having a bit of a, a down day or a day where you just think my child really cannot face another comprehension, then you pull out this book or this book and you do some puzzles. And the great thing is you can do them together so it can feel collaborative and um, your child can keep thinking intellectually, but without the pressure that, um, that does inevitably build up in these situations. Perfect. Brilliant. And on a personal note, can I see the inside of those? Because you talk about puzzles and, and all sorts of things. It's made me quite interested. Yeah. <laughs> so, so let's have a look. So this is the maths book. Um, in the maths book, for example, you've got some pyramids here. So those Ooh. are anyone who's done some maths would be familiar with this thing. 
We've got some um, some things, uh, some general kind of find Shakespeare's date of birth by doing some some general math. Some of it involves uh, Bodmus or Bidmus, whatever you call it. Um, uh, lots of lovely cartoons. Also these, I'm a real fan of these. A lot of children hate these, but they are, I tell you, really important. Multiplication grids. Um, there's even a decimal one in case your child is, is super, super clever. Um, that's that book. Then I'll show you the other book, which also has things like homophones. And one of my favorites in here, because I remember my child learning this literary technique. So we have a crossword looking at literary techniques. Um, really, it's just keeping your mind. These could be lesson starters. They use them at Westminster Under School as lesson starters. So um, ah. it's just really having your child think in the right frame of mind. Perfect. All right. So back to our questions. What problem do they solve slash what is unique about it? We've touched on that, but you've still got a minute. Off you go. Excellent. Uh, well, obviously, they solve the problem of relentless revision and your child saying, please, not another comprehension or not more maths. Um, remember, the more maths they do and the more comprehension they do, the better they will get. But it helps with boredom. It helps with that feeling of I don't enjoy this. It gives them something else to do. And what I love about them is you can do them. An adult can do these books with your child. So if you just need to persuade them to get going, into a session you say let's do um a fun little puzzle together and then we'll do um what's unique about them i i haven't seen them anywhere except the books i've written yes and i printed them on very high quality paper so if your child is using like a thick marker you won't ruin the book which is very important to the designer beach who i was at university with <laughs> all right on to our next question is it 11 plus specific or does it cover a broader area if we go um i'd say that these books are brilliant if you're in year five um, if you have a particularly bright child, you might be able to start them in year four. But I would say that these are perfect for the summer term and the summer holidays of year five, just before you come up to those exams, because eight weeks is a long time. Um, and, you know, you need to be thinking, I've got to pace myself. Does it cover a broad area? Yes, because I think the general knowledge is really important and you get a bit of that with the A to Zs of geography and science and history. Um, and uh, the next book I'm going to write, which I'll tell you about in a minute, because I have a feeling that might be the next question, is um, <laughs> I say these are suitable for 80 year olds um, at, because really anyone can have a go. It's, uh, and I think a lot of parents often think I can't, I can't help my child. I wasn't very good at maths. Or I wasn't very good at English. I think this is all quite accessible and you could do them with your child. <laughs> all right. I think the next one, the next one is what are your top tips? And you can choose a year. You can do all of them. I know that your books, if they focus on year five, that might be the area to, to focus. Um, it's entirely up to you. What are your top tips for our parents? Okay, top tips for parents. I remember this time. It's like the long tunnel of 11 plus, if you are focused on it, which I'm sure all of you are. Um, my top tips are to pace yourself. It's really important that you don't go in there all guns blazing because your child might just switch off. Um, I would say in year four, focus on the homework that's set at school if homework is set. Do that as best as you can and make sure that all of your number bonds and multiplication and all of those things are really good and that your child is reading. Year five, you start to gear it up. Definitely the time to start bringing in workbooks um, and maybe looking, starting to look at past papers towards the end of year five if you can get on them. And um, year six, you know, this is it. You're going for it. But always keep in mind, keep the perspective, because if your child doesn't get into the school you would like them to, it's not the end of the world. There are going to be other opportunities later um, to achieve things. And it's really important that they don't feel that they have failed. Perfect. Uh, that is useful because we do get a lot. Uh, you never tell what can happen on the day, can you? And 
and uh, you don't want a lot Absolutely. of children to be disappointed or to feel like they've disappointed their parents um that's one i've had previously intuition um never really can disappoint uh, but it's important that they know that as well all right next Absolutely. one what other resources would you recommend not your own not mine. Well, that's obviously tricky, but I will do it. Um, well, obviously, I think everyone who comes on here recommends Sheena's Kad Baladar Quest books. And um, I would hold mine up, but I gave it to my sister for her child, and I'm always lending those books out. We've also obviously got the Linky Links Word Wheels. Um, I love books like this is a Collins Mental Maths book for 10 to 11. Um, I always think they have 30 questions on each page, and... Um, I think that's just a really good amount if you just want to do a bite-sized bit of maths. Um, I would also recommend having things like jigsaws to hand because sometimes you just need your child to get it in their mind that maybe going off to play on a computer game might not be the most kind of conducive thing to revision. So having some other activities, some card games, board games, jigsaws. I'm a fan of these Wentworth ones, but they are quite expensive, so I always ask for them for presents. Um, uh, what else? Um, also, Richard Lomax, just one quickly. Um, I know he God. does other resources, but when my son was doing 11 plus, he did, um, they had some comprehension papers and I found them very useful. Perfect. All right. Brilliant. Yeah, card games is something I play quite a lot with, uh, with some of my students. A lot, a lot of math in card games. A lot of probability too. Brilliant. All right. Here we are. Are, are you good at bridge? <laughs> Don't play me at bridge. Sorry, you're in view. <laughs> it's, it's not a good game. What are you, what are you working on now? Okay, another time. Um, what am I working on now? Well, I'm working on another puzzle book. And this one is going to be for eight to 80 year olds. And the idea behind this book is that um, anyone can dip into it. It's a holiday book. You can, um, again, test yourself on kind of maths puzzles, kind of English puzzles. But for example, um, I'm going to have one section that has film titles back to front. So, for example, you might read front door and the answer would be, what's the opposite of front door? Can you guess, back. Gemma? Rear window. So that, that one. Yeah. So this is for all ages, really. So this is my little <laughs> file of ideas that I'm building up. I'm also helping children with interviews. Um, I found that very useful and I, I help children to feel comfortable, especially online. And... Um, and to have topics that they feel confident talking about um, in interview. Perfect, and just on time. All right, I Ooh. think we're nearing, we're nearing the end. This is the last question. So obviously uh, on 11 Plus Journey, we are running our Just A Minute uh, sessions to allow our, our members to get to know our resource providers a little bit more. But on the real just a minute, uh, you have a minute to talk about a topic and it's usually given. But um, what do you think you could talk about with no hesitation, repetition or deviation? Working go. on the shopping channel. When I was younger, I never imagined I would work in television. But if I had thought I would be on screen, I thought maybe a newsreader. I never would have imagined that I would find myself at some stage working on a uh, television station that sold things to people. So I found myself, <laughs> having done my degree, working on a shopping channel. And it was the best preparation you could have for being on live television. I did the gold collection where I would sell gold jewellery for an hour with no script. It was a bit like being on wow. this. <laughs> and uh, I would just have a Ed ad lib intro, ad lib shop account, and I would sell gold. Um, I also sold fashion items, collectible dolls, toys, fitness equipment, you name it, I sold it. <laughs> and um, luckily I did go on to work on uh, science programs afterwards and education programs, but I will never forget my time on Shop, the home shopping channel. Oh, there we are. <laughs> There's a thing that I don't think many people would know about you. And so therefore, an, an interesting, uh, an interesting thing. All right. So we are coming to the end of our 
short, just a minute sessions. Um, if you are a resource provider and you are watching this and thinking, I can do what Katie is doing right now, um, do drop us a message at 11plusjourney at gmail.com. Um, obviously, I want to thank Saba, uh, who is the, the head of this group, who, uh, who allows us to come on and allows me to run these uh, these short sessions. I want to thank Katie. Thank you very much for, for coming on. And uh, do tell us where we can find you and, and everything that we need to know about Jumping Neck. Well, thank you very much. I tell you where you can find me. You can find me on Instagram at Jumping Yak. And in my stories, I often recommend books to read, other resource providers, um, films, documentaries that I think your children should be watching and things like that. So that's a very good place to find me. And also I have a website, www.jumpingyak.com. And I publish a blog and sometimes I will recommend resource providers or documentaries I think your children should be watching or apps they could be playing on their phones that will keep their minds alive. So um, so do go to my website and have a little look around there. And No, oh, I've just lost you there. <gasps> Don't lose oh. me. Come, come back. Where can we find you? Where can we find your, your website, the blog? Uh, my website is www.jumpingyak.com. Perfect. And you'll All find right. loads of ideas. I don't know. Perfect. All right. Uh, I think that's all. I, uh, I'm, as I said, thank you ever so much for coming on. Um, thank you, Sabah. Thank for you. Us, uh, you, you're, you are just like being on now, just a minute. <laughs> I think you should do this for. <gasps> Hopefully, a not, as, not as stressful. <laughs> all right. <laughs> Um, Thank brilliant. you. Brilliant. All right then. Thanks ever so much then. Thank you then. Bye bye. bye. bye.